Welcome to my channel. My name's Molly, but my friends call me Mole, and I run a small sewing business from home called Frog and Mole. Okay, so today's video is a little bit different for you. Um, we are going to be focusing on a how-to tutorial. Now, today we're going to be looking at how to sew the side seams of a wedding dress. Now, this um, alteration, although it is bridal, will apply to any dress that you have that has boning, top stitching, lace beads, any sort of couture and fine sewing techniques or details. This video is also going to be really useful for anyone out there who is either altering a wedding dress for themselves that they've bought, perhaps you're making your own wedding dress which is really exciting. We will talk through a few construction techniques which will probably be really useful for you. Um, perhaps you're altering somebody else's wedding dress, maybe a friend's, or if like me you are a sewist and perhaps you want to start offering bridal alterations as one of your services. Guys, if you haven't hit that subscribe button, what are you waiting for? Hit it down here and if you're interested in learning a bit more about the sewing and bridal world do hit that notification bell as well just so you stay up to date and by the end you guys will be absolute pros okay so this dress today was very kindly donated to me by a local wedding shop just for me to upcycle and kind of show you all the um, juicy details that go on inside of a wedding dress now as you can see like I said the side seams are too big now the first pro tip that I'm gonna give you guys is this when I sew any wedding dresses I always lift from the shoulders first so you can see that the bodice is sat ever so slightly too low on the mannequin. So what I tend to do is I alter the shoulders first and then I take the side seams in. Now, if you don't do that, and obviously you can do it however you want. And I'm sure there are lots of bridal seamstresses out there who do things differently from me, maybe slightly similarly, but obviously everyone has their own techniques, but this is how I like to do things. If you just pull the side seams in as is, it's gonna be harder for you to lift here it's gonna be snug also once you've lifted it here it might not fit the proportions um, if you've taken it in slightly lower on the body so let's look at the side seams in a little more detail now with the side seams of wedding dresses you tend to either have um, lace that sits on top of the side seam so it's been closed first and then they put the lace on after or if you you might be really lucky and you may get a wedding dress where the lace has been sewn into the side seam in which case you don't have to unpick anything so you are onto a winner now with this dress um, the lace will have to be unpicked from the side seam it's beaded on top now beading is either beaded directly onto the lace which means you don't have to re-bead it which is another winner or they will have sewn the beading um, straight onto the bodice which means you have to unpick it now with alterations our aim really is for the dress to look as close to um, how it did originally so once you've unpicked all of these things if they are on your dress you want to keep them safe because we're going to pop them on at the end okay so let's look at the dress in slightly more detail so um, let's just go in and unzip this and take a look at the side seams. Now this dress was uh, an example, so it might be a little bit grubby. So this is a side seam here, and these are this is what we have to deal with. So I'm just gonna take the elastic um, out there. You'll find this in wedding dresses, so if this is a good tip for you guys if you're gonna make your own wedding dress. Now I've made a wedding dress before and I've used elastic that was thinner, but there tends to be an elastic waistband inside just to give you a bit more structure. I guess to act as if a um, corset or a bra. Now we have um, ribbon loops here to hang the dress and we're gonna deal with those in a minute. And what you do have is, if you guys can see, is there is tip top stitching that runs all the way along here. Um, and then the illusion neckline you can see. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna turn the dress inside out so that you can get all the juicy details of what a wedding dress looks like inside. That is the center of the wedding dress and what you tend to find in most wedding dresses is that they just tack the lining of the skirt to the top fabric just so that everything stays in the same position. Now I'm just gonna grab my scissors for you and we're gonna snip and reveal the inside. So. I'm just gonna snip these here. Now these are things that you will need to be, sort of remember, I guess, so at the end we wanna pop these um, back in. Okay, now, what we do have in this dress as well, which you may come, come across, is they have just sewn the elastic to the side seam of the lining and that's obviously so that the lining gets pulled in with the top fabric. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna snip this as well 
Now, what you can do if you're feeling brave is you can use a razor to open um, the side seams, but as that's a little more advanced, I'm just gonna stick with scissors today just to show you. This is the first side I'm gonna show you. And one of the first steps. So, um, this is the front of the dress. So this is the dress that on the outside you would see the lace and you can just see here where they have sewn all the lace. Now the first thing we're gonna do is where they have sewn the, um, hopefully you can see here, where they have sewn the ribbon inside, uh, what you tend to find in all wedding dresses is that they top stitch the ribbon to the lining just so that when you pull the ribbon or when you hang the dress by the ribbon, it doesn't pull the lining out, the lining and the ribbon. The ribbon and the lining and the top fabric are all attached. And then I'm gonna go ahead and snip this side. And I will show you at the end as well a couple of options for um, re-sewing this. Um, but always remember how it was sewn originally, okay? So um, if they have just popped a, a stitch through here, then you can finish it in the same way as well. So that's a really easy way to finish um, the ribbon loop. Okay, and now we're gonna turn this around to the lining side. Now the lining side is where all of the construction details tend to be on a wedding dress. So um, what you have here are boning, and they're usually finished on the end with about a, is that an inch, slightly less than an inch? Um, it's usually just an off cut, so this is a satin off cut. You can get, um, caps to go on the end, but I've used those before and I found that they're really bulky and they're actually not very effective and this is much easier, so they're finished on the end here. So if you are um, looking at making your own wedding dress, this is how you can finish your boning. Also, um, boning tends to differ in wedding dresses, but I will go through that in a separate video for you guys. And here you can see that they have sewn in the cups, um, but you can also just tack the cups at the top of the bust here and at the bottom. That's what I tend to do. I don't tend to sew them in. These sort of um, finishes are really hard to um, sew back in once the whole dress has been constructed. They would have done this once when the two, um, the lining and the bodice were separate pieces. So you can't really do these. I, f I find they're too hard to re-sew them in exactly the same way. So this is how um, the lining side looks. So you've got the elastic like I mentioned and there's no boning that runs along um, the side seam here and there actually isn't any boning that runs along the side seam on the top fabric but usually there is and that's what gives it a nice finish and it doesn't go um, all lumpy. So if you ever find um, that on a wedding dress the side seams do this like this, they kind of go a bit wibbly. You just need to pop a piece of boning in there to give it a bit more structure. I tend to find on the um, dresses which are on the lower end budget, they don't always put boning on the side seams and you don't get as nice finish, but obviously, maybe that's something that only I notice because I work in bridal, but you know, it's no big deal, but it just gives it a nice finish if you've got boning on the fabric, on the top fabric side, not on the lining side. Okay, so let's have a look along the side seam where we're going to unpick. So you can see here that the side seam has been top stitched. So what we want to do is we're going to go in, we're going to turn it back right sides out. So what you want to do is um, unpick the ribbon here. Don't worry if you damage these, the ribbon because it's going to be sewn back into the seam and I will show you, like I said, how I do that later. So that's already been freed. And what you really want to do is work out how much you want to take the dress in by and then pick past that point. And I will just show you as well a few of the things that you want to avoid when you're um, sewing a side seam. So that's the next stage for you guys is I want you to go ahead and unpick this, if you can. And it doesn't need to be unpicked too far out. Try not to unpick the top stitching that sits over the boning if you can help it because that's going to stop the boning from riding up. As soon as you unpick this, the boning will start to ride up like this. So if it doesn't need to be taken in a huge amount and this doesn't need to be reshaped, then try not to pick past this. But in some instances you have to. So, you know, if you need to, do. But if you can avoid it, don't. But we still want a nice finish. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and unpick this one. What you can do as well, which you might find easier, is you can um, snip into this so far 
then you'd have to unpick it and then you can just unpick a few past. But the unpicking slightly further out is what's gonna give you a nice clean line, so make sure you guys do that. And then so once we've got to that stage, all I'm gonna do is, like I said, you don't wanna to go too far past here, but I'm just gonna unpick a few here. But yeah, if you use a razor, it is slightly quicker. But yeah, so we freed a few here and then we're gonna unpick top stitching here and go up to this point. Okay, so we've unpicked the top stitching here as well. Um, and then what we want to do is, if you don't have an illusion neckline, just discount this because you don't need to worry about this at all. Um, but what you want to do is we're just going to, um, basically we don't want these to be attached. So we're just going to go in with either scissors or a seam and ripper. And then you can see it's quite easy to unpick a few things is we're just going to take that illusion off of here. Now, they what they have done is the illusion has been sewn down with a lace, so we're going to go to the top fabric and we're going to unpick the lace as well in a minute. Okay, so that is the lace unpicked. Now, what I will quickly show you, so that side there is unpicked. Now, what I want you to do is, obviously, I want you to mirror everything, so I want you to do the same on the other side. So today I'm not going to do that because I'm just going to show you how to do it on one side because this isn't actually for a client, but I want you to do the same on this side as well. Okay, so um, we're just going to turn it around to face the right way now. Okay, so everything's unpicked. Now um, I'm just going to show you very quickly what the dress would have looked like if I'd had a fitting. So um, if the dress was pinned, for example, like this, what you want to do is, um, don't worry in the fitting too much if you pull more seam allowance on one side than the other. What you're gonna do is once you've, um, when you come back to the dress, um, okay. So now I'm just going to quickly show you what it's going to look like on the outside once you've pinned it on either yourself or the, the mannequin or your client. Um, so what you want to do is take your trusty tape measure. Don't worry too much if you pull in too much on one side than the other. That doesn't matter in the fitting. All you want to do is get it as close to the body as possible. Um, that is comfortable for the bride. So don't go, obviously you want it to be comfortable for them as well. They need to breathe. Um, so what we're going to do is you're just going to measure this side. So that side is um, about 1.8. And then this side here is about 1.8 as well. So I've pinned those equally by some fluke, but if you, for example, find that you have pinned, um, like I said, one slightly more than the other, for example, like this, what you're gonna do is you're gonna measure here. So that is three. That one is 1.5. You're going to add them up together and then you're going to divide them up by two and then you're going to take um, an equal amount off of each side. Now, obviously, if your client is um, has a very, very obvious um, difference in each body side, maybe you wouldn't do it evenly. But um, I tend to find that this gives a good result. So, yeah, measure and then divide it so you're taking in the same amount on each side. So let me just take those in. So that's kind of how it sh would look after you've fitted the dress. So I've grabbed myself um, a tray here just to pop the beads in and the lace. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start um, picking The lace has been picked past. I've collected the beads here in my trusty little, my trusty little tray. And then the last thing we want to do, 
um, if we are, so obviously when you're taking the seam, side seams, you might not have to take it all the way down, but I'm gonna take it all the way down today just for you guys to see um, how to deal with a waistband that's been sewn on um, just in the side seams, but not along the um, waistband. So what we wanna do now is you're gonna lift that waistband that is pinned past that point so we don't want to catch any of this in the waistband here okay so this is pinned up and we've got the um, end of the the pin pointing um, into the seam because we don't want to catch um, the head of the pin so that is what my side seam looks like yours might look slightly different but these are the things that are going to make it easier for you and give you a nice finish by lifting this up and picking past the seam allowance and obviously picking past that top stitching so we don't catch it so I'm just gonna pop these things here. So what I am using is a um, air erasable marker, which tends to work really good on the wedding dresses that I work on because they are synthetic and it erases quite quickly. Um, I have used this on cottons and it takes ages to go. So just be aware of that, but that's what I tend to use rather than chalk. And then I've just got my tape measure here and my pins just so that we can pin the inside. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do guys is I'm just going to unpick um, the waistband here just so I can get into it, okay? So, here we go. And so you can see where we've pinned that waistband up here. Okay, so what you wanna do, grab your air erasable marker and measure two centimeters or your seam allowance. Now what I'm gonna do on this side, actually I'm gonna do one centimeter because I do need to take it in on the other side. So that's one centimeter there. And then what I'm gonna do is if you are worried, what you can do is um, sort of mark it going down and then graduating into the side seam. But if you feel um, quite confident, what you can do is just mark the one centimeter at the top and then just um, you're gonna Start from the waistband and you're just gonna sew a nice line across here and try and get it as even as possible. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pin that. And what you wanna do as well is when you're pinning, you just wanna feel along here and make sure that you are not catching any lace at all or there aren't any beads in there. And if you do have a um, pleated um, waistband in here, is when you sew it, you just wanna make sure that you're not sewing the pleat up the wrong way. Another tip for you guys is that if you are going for a fit, if you are doing fittings, I tend to find the really nice long um, needles, pins rather, are really effective when you're um, taking in lots and also obviously wedding dresses are quite thick so these ones don't tend to bend as much as your average pin. Um, I would recommend you using a new needle um, if you're worried about creating um, pulls in your fabric but you can usually hear when your needle's blunt and then we're going to start at the bottom here so what, what you want to do if you can if you don't need to take it in at the waist what you want to do is um, make sure you sew that same line of stitching here because you want the waistband um, to be the same size um, or rather you want the skirt and the bodice to be the same size here so they attach back really easily so you don't want to change that that seam allowance here you want to keep that and then you want to start graduating slightly higher up that I have just come out slightly here and graduated it and then gone into that one centimeter so what you want to do now is you just want to go ahead and you want to open that um, seam allowance that was already sewn just so you can press it flat. So that is the top fabric side done and now we're going to move over to the lining side. And then what we want to do as well is with the ribbon here we're just going to take that off. And then what we do want to do, so you will find um, with 
these ribbon loops but they are either sewn into the side seam like this or they are sewn along the top like this one was along here. Now what we're going to do is we are going to pop it into the side seam like this. So what I want you to do is you're going to just open quite close to the top, you're just going to open a little hole like this, okay? Hopefully you guys can see this there and then you are going to make sure this is facing the right way and you're just going to push that through the hole and then pull it out the other side like this and then we're just going to secure that like this. So we just want to make sure that is nice and secure in there. Rick, you want to make sure that you um, keep that seam allowance the same and then graduate it out. You want the bodice and the skirt to still fit together. Um, obviously, un unless you're altering the dress past the hip, then don't. Then obviously you need to keep altering all the way down, but we're just doing waist. Um, so this, this all applies if you're doing the waist as well. Now what you want to do is you want to go ahead and press your side seams because we want them to be nice and neat. So at this point, if you had boning, you would have taken it out and then on the um, top side of the fabric, once you've ironed, you will um, sew that boning along here. Where if you're sewing your boning back down, you want to make sure you don't go too far. You don't want to catch it in the um, seam allowance along the um, neckline. So make sure the boning ends slightly lower um, so you don't catch it and also slightly um, higher so you don't catch it in the um, waistband. So yeah, you want your boning to sort of be along here really ideally so you don't catch it anywhere. Um, and when you sew your boning in, what you want to do is make sure you don't sew onto the top side of the fabric. So you're going to place your boning and you're just going to sew onto the seam allowance. So on one side, you could do both sides but I usually do one because it's easier. So that's if you guys have got boning. And now I'm just going to um, sew that waistband back together. Okay guys, so hopefully you can see that I've sewn back along that waistband there. And I haven't caught anything on that side, so you want to make sure that's a nice smooth line there and you don't have any and then if you check here, you can kind of see if you've caught anything. So now the last thing to look at um, is that illusion um, neckline, which is just sat in here. Now, what I tend to do is I, um, because there's lace that sits over the top, what I tend to do, which is probably the cheats way, but it's easier and quicker. So what you could do is you can unpick that top stitching here and then you would just open these out and take that two centimeters and then you would basically sew those two back together like this. But I tend to find that's quite fiddly. So all I usually do is I either um, sew these back together like this and then that seam allowance is hidden on the inside of the arm or you can literally just um, hand stitch those two together whatever you find easier so yeah make sure that the um, armholes meet up with each other here and then you want to mark on your one centimeter which is there and then you want to make sure it's one centimetre all the way down. You're not doing any graduation because the top of the bodice is one centimetre, so that has to be the same distance there. Uh, if you feel quite confident that the seam allowances won't have to go back out, what you can do is if you wanted to, you could just trim that up if you wanted to, but you don't have to. And then all we're going to do now is we're going to sew this um, along that um, top line just to close the bodice now. So I'm just going to show you what you don't want to do and um, what it looks like if you um, catch that top stitching in.
you can see that. So the waistband sits along here and you haven't caught anything in it. So this is what will happen if you um, don't pick the top stitching back there. So it should have ended here really, but you can see that it's caught the top stitching here and you don't get quite um, as nice a finish. And we are going to attach the um, elastic waistband here um, back to the seam allowance. So all you want to do is you're going to pull that down like this. Make sure they are even at the top here and then I'm just going to sew that elastic back down here. So there you go, the elastic is now attached to um, the top fabric here. So that means that when the elastic is pulled in, you're going to be pulling in the top fabric of the bodice. We are just going to, um, so you want to go from the inside, so you want to go from the bodice side and you're going to come out and then you're going to go back through just so it's nice and strong. Basically you want those two to sit together like this, so we're going to go into that side as well and then back out like this and then that's really simple isn't it basically you do it however you want just make sure you attach those two pieces um, back together so they will get pulled in and the lining is not going to sit any lower than the um, top fabric of the skirt that is very simple so that's it so I'll just tie those two together what we want to do is we're just going to secure the ribbon the same way that it was secured. So all they have done is um, get another, get the same strong thread that you've just used. Pop a double knot in it. Now there are a couple of ways that you can sew the ribbon back in. So you can either um, you can either make sure you catch the like catch the ribbon on the lining side and you can either top stitch along here because the lace is going to go over there so it doesn't matter if it's slightly visible you can um, sew with a um, the thread so you can hand sew those together or on the inside like you've sewn the elastic or like I've sewn the elastic back to the um, top fabric you can sew the seam allowances of the top fabric and lining and that's just going to hold those two layers together so when you pull the ribbon those two are going to be stuck together. So we're just going to go ahead and finish it in the same way um, as the manufacturers have so all they've done is gone in on the side seam and then you're going to match the same position on the side seam on the top fabric. And then so you can see there that you can't really see it, there's just a, a tiny little stitch there but that's going to be covered up. And then I am just going to double knot it. So you can see now that when you lift up the um, ribbon that it's going to pull the lining and the top fabric together and the lining is not going to come up on its own. And then so that is all of the sewing that we're going to do. I'm just going to move my sewing machine out of the way. And then all we're going to do is we are going to um, open out the um, lace that we'd pin back and we're going to, now you could press this again if you want to, and any loose threads snip those off. But we're just going to pin um, the lace back in place. And then But yeah, you can kind of see really that it looks more or less um, exactly the same as it did before. So now it's just a case of um, hand sewing those back on and then hand sewing a few beads on. And then that is it for a side seam alteration. So I'm just going to whiz through that really quickly.
is um, the lace sewn back on there, guys. Um, it was relatively quick, but you can see that it looks basically exactly the same. So all there is left to do is to tie off these threads and to pop um, these beads back on here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and quickly do that. And then we are done. So like I said, when you are grabbing your thread, what you wanna do is you want it to be just as long as your forearm basically. Um, it takes more time actually, if it's longer, to, um, you put more effort doing this, lifting your arm out really far. Um, I tend to find that if you go for a thread which is really long, um, it knots really easily. So yeah, that's top, top tip as well. Also, if anyone's got any tips of how to tie knots really quickly, let me know in the comments because I am not very far. Okay, so beading. So when you're um, re-beading a wedding dress, all you want to do is basically um, pick out the um, flowers or whatever you happen to be looking at, try and find one that's similar in the dress and then you can just copy the way it's beaded. So that um, flower here is the same as the flower here, so I will just look at the way that they've beaded this and copy that. Um, also, what I tend to do is the beads on the underarm can scratch, so um, I either don't put them back on there or I ask the bride if they're uncomfortable because they can rub on the underarm. Also another tip for you guys for tying off um, threads. Let me bring that a bit closer so you can see. This is a big eyed needle. They're really handy because um, the eye is really big, like I said. Um, they're really good for catching really short threads. So if you have a thread like this and you think I'm not gonna be able to get my needle in there because the length of my needle is actually longer than the thread, these are really handy. So I recommend you guys go and get them. So you can see the thread moves along the whole eye. So it doesn't matter if it's short. So these are really, really handy. But yeah, let me know if you want me to do another video as well about needles or anything that I use. But that is a finished um, side seam. Okay guys, so that is how you alter the side seams of a wedding dress. Um, as you can see, it looks pretty damn good. It looks exactly the same as it did really. So um, yeah, let me know if you've got any um, comments or if there's uh, anything you would like any further details on or any videos or anything that you think would be beneficial for you. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe and hit that notification bell if you want to stay up to date with all of my awesome videos. And I will see you all again same time next Wednesday. Bye!